Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross. I'm David. And today we're going to do our unboxing video of the new Kill Team Rogue Trader set. So this is a big sort of expansion to the current rule. Uh, sorry, uh, Kill Team rules, bringing in a whole bunch of new models which you can't get otherwise at the moment, along with uh, a whole bunch of new rules, mats, uh, generally a whole bunch of stuff to bring variety to your goodies. Kill Team games. So yeah, will be really interesting to see how this impacts the game. So with that, David, what do we get in the box? So the box, first and foremost, I want to be a big thank you to Games Workshop yes. for sending us the box, giving us early access to the juicy content that's inside. We're massive fans on the channel of Kill Team. Mm -hmm. um, so again, a massive thank you to Games Workshop for helping to fuel that passion for Kill Team. So what is in the box? Because that's all you guys really care about. So in the box, we've got a lot of fun stuff. So we have 56 page Kill Team Rogue Trader book, which is like its own sort of rules in itself. 24 page uh, codex of the Elucidian Star Striders booklet. That's new to me. Yes, so this will be the sort of mini codexes that allow you to transition the, the, the models in the box into your regular 40k games. I can see a dog in the back of this picture, so I think I've just found my new pet's name, the Elucidian Star Strider. <laughs> Yes, there is a dog in the game as well. Also, that's a fantastic name. So we then have a 24 page codex for the Geller Pox Infected booklet. Yes. Uh, a double sided game board. Excellent, because the last game board was really worth its money. The Sector Imperialis board. Yes. Really fun. Fold out um, Warhammer Codex core, sorry, Warhammer 40k core rules. Just your standard rules for all of 40k 8th edition. Mm -hmm. Uh, 10 Elucidian Star Strider Kill Team data cards, 6 uh, tactics cards, 2 um, Elucia Va Vane tactics cards, assuming she's unique. So she's the sort of leader of the rogue traders. Uh, we'll go into a bit more detail on that one, but she has two exclusive cards I imagine will be just for herself. I'm very limited as to what's in this. Okay. Um, we then have Elucidian um, Star Strider Kill Team tokens, very similar to the tokens you already got in the previous box set for Admech and Gene Stealer Cult. 20 Geller Pox Infected uh, data cards, 6 Geller Pox Tactics cards, 2 Vulgar Thrice Cursed, definitely not using that name for my next cap. No. Uh, Geller Pox Infected Kill Team tokens as well. So you're getting all your nice utensils and things you'd expect to play the game just straight from the box, but you need some models. We're getting more models this time. Mm -hmm, so yes. we're getting 33 Citadel miniatures, that's 10 Elucidian Star Striders and 23 Geller Pots Infected. Just giving me a snapshot at the back there, guys. There is plenty of stuff contained within this box. Speaking of which, what's contained inside it? Let's have a look what's inside it, David. Now, last time when we had the Kill Team uh, box, I, I think I opened it and I sort of failed at opening it. Uh, I think I also did the 8th edition box and I failed at opening that as well. So this time, David, you're doing a really good job of opening this and you've already nailed it. In fairness Ross, this box uh, didn't have a, like, a wrapper on it etc. I didn't hit start. Right, okay, but you still made that a lot more effortless than when I usually try and box things. Ross, why don't you start sharing some of the stuff in the box. Cool, so first thing to probably note is that there is scenery on the top here that you didn't mention in the back. Yeah, it's not listed in the back. I can see it in the picture, but it's not listed in the back. Fair enough. So yeah, scenery. Uh, there's some, you know, doors there, escape hatches. There's a cool chest. It's a cool chest with the key in as well. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, terrain's pretty solid actually. Yeah. So obviously that might be. Reminds me. Um, it looks like that's me like escape pods, something yep. like that. It's very much uh, what you expect in like the Space Hulk set. We many bits of terrain like doors and stuff just to add more sort of flavour to the game board. So nice, really yeah. nice. So there's two sprues of that on the top there. Uh, next up we have the models themselves. So there's only two sprues here for the entirety of them. That is 22 models on the top there. Now it would be one thing I want to mention is that some of them are quite small units, almost akin to uh, Nurglings. It's 23 models guys, they're not cheating us. Hmm? It's 23 oh, it's models. 23, sorry. Yeah, they're, not, they're not cheating us at all. So it's, it's, it's 23 models, some of them are like Nurgling size, some of them are a lot bigger. 
Uh, I'm super excited to see a bit more about they the look bigger awesome. units, you know, uh, bigger zombies because sometimes you need brutes. However, look at these guys. So yeah, these are the, how do you pronounce it, Elucidian? Elucidian Star Strider is my next pet name. Yep, okay, I'll need to learn it because otherwise you'll get me into trouble. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's some incredible detail on these guys. Have a look at that sort of cloak there. Yeah. Try and see if you can get it to the camera. Yeah, okay, yes. Yeah, very hard for you guys to maybe see it, but... Um, there's a lot of good iconography on that. Yeah. Very much from reminiscent of uh, Adeptus Mechanicus. Yeah, so having the cloaks and everything, very, very similar great. to that. Uh, there's a rotor cannon as well, which I don't think you see on many Imperial units. Uh, I'll throw it the right way. Good old Daka. Yep, so that'll be interesting to see that rule on that side. So yeah, cool. Obviously, you get all the artwork is on there as well. Got to promote the kill team, but uh, cannot be a bit of hard work to put on your wall. Yeah, that was pretty nice. Uh, obviously, the bases, which we don't really need to go over too much. I'm sure you all know what bases are like by now. But more importantly, you've got your new dedicated kill team sets of data cards and tactics cards. We won't open these and go into them in any detail, but um, your, your sets that you have in your first kill team box set, very reminiscent of what these sets will be as well. Sure. Okay, okay. What else have we got in here, Ross? There's a lot more to come. So there's a couple things. You've obviously got your instructions on how to build your uh, units. So yeah, that's kind of handy on that one. They look easy to build as well. Well, there's only two sprues. You know, even I can't <laughs> go wrong. Uh, we'll go into the mat first. So let's try and get this. Uh, yep. So the mat is double-sided. Uh, you've got two things to go from here. Oh. You're doing a good job. I'm gonna get this, David. I'm gonna get this. I think you got the other side. Yeah, as well. yeah okay. Flip that side. It's all becoming a conundrum. So yeah, there we go. We'll do this side first. So I think this is very sort of. If I was to guess, that's sort of your wide area Kelty mat. Almost looks like if I was to guess the cargo hold. I am entirely guessing. Or some sort of inner sanctum. Yeah, I would know. There's like sort of lines here, which may be where you want to set up walls, etc. Uh, just in case you want to put in more terrain there. So that's kind of cool there. Uh, there is a skull in the middle, isn't there? There is a big skull yeah, I can see in the middle. Yeah, yeah, there I is. thought I was just imagining that. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's sort of your big wide one. However, I saw this on the other side. This appears to be sort of a map of the, uh, I want to say their ship. I'm not sure what their ship's called. It but, looks awesome. Uh, yeah, you can actually do your kill team on a small ship. Just realising this, um, there's a ship, so I'm assuming Geller is, correct me if I'm wrong, Ross. Mm -hmm. Is that Geller Fields? So the Geller Pox affected, yes. So the Geller Fields, uh, that sort of, I, didn't, I don't know anything about lore so much, but I read this recently, that the Geller Fields is what sort of protects them as they go through the yeah, warp. Yeah. But the Geller Field is sort of some sort of infections going through it, and that has brought this sort of form of plague, mm. and obviously infected these guys on board. What's interesting about this one, I would note, is that, there's part of it that's space, so <laughs> yes, uh, it's a spaceship, there's space, uh, so it's not a whole board. Some part of me hopes that, you know, you can be sucked out in space, you know, and oh. and possibly, you know, if the hull becomes compromised, you go get sucked out, that'd be really, really cool, because I don't think any of these guys are particularly going to do well in the void of space. No, I'd imagine they'd, without the they'd, they'd ship. die. You know, so we've got obviously, you know, the front part of the ship, um, yeah, so the front part of the ship, uh, the part that you ram with or you go forward with. That's, um, I've, I've played so much Battlefleet Gothic, I know that is the technical name, the front part of the ship. Uh, or ramming part of the ship. Um, yeah. Starboard? No. No! Let's just call it the front part. The, the front ship. part uh, of David. the ship. Yep, okay, we'll move on from our knowledge of naval, you know, stuff. We uh, play ground arms. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, there's a lot of detail now, and it'll be really interesting to see if you can actually play, and I'll presume this will be in the rules, whether you can then transition sort of your own other kill teams into this that's not just narrative. Because yeah. I would love to see uh, Gene Stealers or some kind of Tyranids fight. Freebooter Orcs, man. Uh, Freebooter Orcs, okay. Yeah, yeah, Pyro sure. Orcs. Pyro Orcs, yeah, okay, I love that, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, going on and basically trying to take over a ship from, say, some guardsmen or Primaris Marines yeah. fighting in the close com uh, confines of the ship. So that's really awesome. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that map. I think that's pretty, pretty cool. Uh, that fact's double-sided. Just means you get a lot of value for your money. I'm very impressed you just folded that up in one go. Off camera when we were setting up battle reports, it's usually a struggle. Oh yeah, it's well that was instinctive. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I got something right. 
So what else have we got? Uh, we have your sort of uh, the core rules. Yeah. Don't need to look at them. We know the rules, don't we, David? Yeah. Yeah, said the conviction. We never make any mistakes, and you guys never remind us of any of the mistakes. No, I kid not. We yep. appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be the sort of counters that you do get. This will obviously be the Lucidian Star Striders. Yeah. And the, the, the Poxes ones on here as well. Won't open them. Uh, and more importantly, finally, we are going to have... We've got three books here. So we'll go into this. This is the Mini Codexes. So yeah, that like is this. the uh, Lucidian Star Striders. That is their Mini Codex. And that is the... Uh, Galarpox Infected Codex. Now, I think I'm going to do a, a video in itself looking into the codexes that will probably be published very shortly after these ones, mm -hmm. like very soon, and I'll look at these <laughs> on how... How soon? Like, I don't know. Well, it'll be so soon that you might not realise. Anyway, uh, I'll probably just discuss sort of on first impression how they're going to go into the 40k rules, but yeah, mini codexes for obviously when new units come in how they're going to apply uh, into 40k and I'm very interested ve very interested to see these guys I may not have my death card yet but I do enjoy my zombies uh, these look amazing well uh, in 7th I used a lot of like cultist zombies now I actually have pox walkers and now I have big zombies so yeah. that is going to be really really cool next up we have the actual road, rogue uh, trader kill team rules so as far as I know this comes with a whole bunch of like different You've stuff. You've probably read more about it than I have. I'm kind of completely blind to this part of it. Cool. Um, so the first part is about lore, uh, as you do. Uh, probably talking about rogue traders as such because, you know, expand on theirs a wee bit. You, we've got the name of the ship, I believe, called the True Hawk. And I think that's explaining all the different sections of the True Hawk uh, in a bit more detail, such as your engine, etc. I just want to make a correction, I think. My new pet's name will actually be that. The True Hawk. The True Hawk's in the way true hawk. The True Hawk. Okay, okay. Uh, fair enough. And then you've got the Ministrum uh, Shrine as well, which is the reverse side of that as well. Uh, so yeah, and then after them you have the rules. So what are the rules that have changed in Kill Team? Beginning what? with Ultra Close Confines. So I'm imagining obviously this is if you're going to be fighting uh, in spaceships and there's going to be lots of walls, uh, you know, there's going to be different ways that you actually combat, you know, less open space and ruins an area, you go past a wall and there's a zombie in your face. How are you going to deal with that situation? Ultra close confines. <laughs> uh, you know, there's rules for doors, point blank, blank overwatch, which is awesome, that's a, a stratagem, so there's additional stratagems when fighting in ultra close confines. Uh, we have one new kill zone, uh, which is called the True Hawk. So that's when you're playing on the True Hawk map. You have uh, sort of new environmental problems. So obviously number one is all systems running smoothly. Nothing's going wrong. You'd expect that. You're okay. Number one, no, 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 no rules. Number six is always the bad one, isn't it? So we have number six is compromised hull integrity. Each time you roll an unmodified hit roll uh, of one for model in the shooting phase, you must roll another d6. If the result is another one, uh, the stray shot pierces the outer hull and each player must roll a d6 for each model in their kill team on a one. The model being rolled for suffers a mortal wound. The hull can only be breached once per battle. So that's a way to get a whole bunch of mortal wounds. If you've got a whole bunch of models and then you have to roll what I mean, if I mean, that's one in six of your models is going to suffer a mortal wound. Yeah, that's a lot of potential injury table rolls right there. Right there. Probably would go if you know, compromise hull integrity and like you're about to get sucked into the vortex of space, you might die. Yeah. But you know, mortal wounds, I mean, if you had like big creatures and you're like Tyranids and you had four models and all of them got sucked into space, well, aliens, but uh, <laughs> it's happened before. It's happened before. <laughs> It's happened before, uh, you know, that might be a bit unfair. So just suffering mortal wounds might be a bit more balanced. Yeah. But that's the risk you take though. That's the risk you take when you start shooting guns in space, ill-advised or on planes, you know. So don't get sucked into the vortex of doom. Yeah. So, uh, grav plates malfunction as well, logics, l logist lockdown, yep. It's a ton of new stuff right Yeah, here. so there's a whole just bunch of with. environmental problems. Uh, and there's another side, so the other side also is called uh, the Ministrum Shrine, which has environmental table as well. So number one, Deserted Shrine, no rules. 
Number six, fog of incense. Uh, subject uh, subtract six from range characteristics from all ranged weapons to a minimum of six. Oh, and subtract two from all charge rolls. So I'm glad they put a negative on both there. Yeah. But removing six inches from ranged weapons, like say for Elder, they've only got what range twelve weapons. Twelve. So their long range is anything beyond three inches. Yes. So wow, wow that's not going to be good. Subtracting two from charge, I mean, that's going to make combat a lot more difficult. Yeah, your flayed ones, your tyrannids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's going to make them quite difficult on that side. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of environmental rules which you've got to adapt to if you are playing Kill Team. That's part of Kill Team. So yeah, here's something uh, I don't think you'll have known about this because no. I've done a wee bit of reading on Kill Team as the post have came up. And this is they've added in Commanders. So I'm not entirely sure what the commander is going to be in effect, but this is sort of a role I think above leader and is going to be very heavy in the narrative sense. So if you're playing like a kill team or multiple kill teams and uh, you're going to basically have a commander who's one step ahead and I think sort of leading multiple kill teams. I like that. That's a nice flavour to it. So yeah, so and there's about here commanders and campaigns. So I think they're going to be really sort of very important to how they work. Uh, there's also commander tactics, commander upgrades, you know, casualty roles for them as well. Generally, a whole bunch of new ways to run uh, a much more important character yeah. in your kill team. I need, I'm not going to read it all now because you just sit and watch me read. But, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot. So whether it actually applies to all kill teams, which I imagine there may be a way to get it, that your kill team can then have a unit designated as a commander. Makes sense. So yeah. Uh, then we have the Lucidian Star Strider stratagems for when they are in the kill team, which is kind of handy. Uh, their rules, which there is uh, by looks of Nice it, variety. Four units, yep. So you have the Voidsman, which is cool. I suppose that's the general troops for them. Uh, and a whole bunch of units on there as well. Uh, and then you have Lucia Vane. So I imagine she is going to be the commander for the uh, Rogue Trader kill team. Makes sense. As, as she does lead them. So uh, she has a bunch of impressive stats, uh, only strength and toughness is three and only hits and wounds on th threes, but she does have four wounds, meaning she's quite survivable. Uh, once per battle, at the start of the fight phase, pick an enemy model within one inch of the model and roll a dice on a four plus. The enemy suffers d3 mortal wounds. Okay, so she can just chuck out mortal wounds and she has a four up invul save. So Dangerous. Dangerous on that side as well. She has specialist keywords as well, so how that works when she may be a commander is going to be quite interesting. I'm sure as you guys get your own versions and hands on this as well, you'll, you'll start to flesh out a wee bit. But she also has commander upgrades and tactics as well, which I think uh, are exclusive to her. So that's kind of cool, this commander sort of expansion. Uh, there's also appears to be a new, uh, new specialist which is some of them can get, uh, which is called the Strategist Specialist. I don't believe that's in Kill Team already. I don't think so. It looks quite similar though to other ones, but yep. yeah, it looks like it's on one now. Yep, so it's got uh, various sort of tactics in that one, uh, decoys, and uh, it's got uh, its sort of general level one strategist. Is as long as this model is on the battlefield and not shaken, you gain one additional command yep. point at the beginning of the battlefield. Uh, bow, uh, bow round. That's the same as leader. It is, and that's what I'm saying. It sounds obviously very similar to to some other ones. But if we're being honest, we'll as we play it, we might start to realise its uniqueness. Yeah. So we're playing that one. So then after that, you go on to the <laughs> Geller Pox and Bitted. So You're not they, biased. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. That's a fair point, David. So yeah, you have a bunch of stratagems for them as well. You have six units. So yeah, they have a bunch of variety for them, where I think in some other kill teams people complain that there's not as much variety in the units. Well, there you go. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, if you're going to run a Gillapox, you've got loads. Uh, what's some of them named? Nightmare Hulk. Yes, please. You know, that sounds awesome. Six plus save, maybe not so much, but you've got disgustingly resilient. So, so you're, you're fine. <laughs> you're, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, then you've got, obviously, Vulgar Thrice Cursed. So he's going to act as, I imagine, mm -hmm. the commander of the Gellapox Infected, if they can have a commander. So he's got a bunch of stratagems, abilities, uh, you know, he has strength 5, toughness 5, 5 wounds, 5 attacks, 6 up involve save, disgusting resilient, minus 1 leadership, so leadership's very important in Kill Team. What is, you know? Minus 1 leadership for model, enemy models when they're within 1 inch of them. 
He's a fear bomber. So he's fear bomber, he's tough, and I think he hits hard. So mm -hmm. I am very interested in how Vulgar Thrice Cursed works out. That's pretty nice. Uh, and there's another specialist, apparently. Uh, the strength specialist, so that's going to work with your sort of, I imagine, bigger... Uh, Badder ones, guys. You know, what was the one that had uh, the Nightmare Hulk? I imagine probably can be a speci uh, strength specialist. Uh, actually, it's not there, so I'm going to have to do a bit of research into why we'll find that's out. there. But yeah, so we've also got these strength specialists. Uh, they're beginning level one, to give you an example, is add one to model strength characteristics. So, you know, maybe that is just one for, yeah. So that's actually one I think that's going to be exclusive to commanders. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can be a commander, but you also have a specialist, and you can take strength and making him strength six. So he's well, going to pick up guys and throw them apart. We'll need to really look into it a lot more. Yeah, yeah, well, we didn't get to read this book beforehand. So, yeah, very interesting on that side as well. You've got a bunch of open play missions. So three open play missions to have a choice from there. Uh, one, two, three, four, narrative, yep, four narrative missions. Very nice. To go with. Uh, match play missions, which is what we, we play, much play most. Uh, there they look is good, though. Four match place, uh, match play ones there as well. Uh, one called Consecrate with Bloods, which uh, <laughs> sounds awesome. Very cornate. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of new missions to play as well, which I'm liking because uh, you only get really four per you know, yeah. uh, kill team. I think the main rule comes of four, and I think some of the expansions come with extra ones. So we're probably going to have to play with now. So now having eight here, and I think there's some other ones that have more, gives you a whole bunch of missions to play with, and having that bit of variety is awesome. Uh, there's also at the very end advanced rules, uh, historical campaigns. So I imagine that's if a campaign then you know a kill team does awesome and it's going to partake in another uh, campaign. Yep. It continues on. You know, you Bring kill my entire kill team over and over again. And you're like, yeah, we're the baddest sort of kill team there is. I'll get you in the next campaign. <laughs> it's coming. You know, and then uh, you've also got combining kill zones, yeah. which if you want to sort of you know combine them to make a bigger map and to make a bit more variety in your games you can do. They've got rules for that to make your boards wider. So yeah, overall, you're, you're actually getting an absolute ton. You're getting mini codexes, yep. core rules, all your peripherals and extras you would expect to play the game straight out of the box. You're getting two very awesome kill teams. Let's be honest, those Gellerpox guys sound like a ton of fun. That sounds like fun. Can I just point out, ultra close combat is fighting. Models cannot attack through walls. It's like, that's all it says. Just so you know, guys, you can't fight through walls. Um, yeah, uh, thanks, Ross. Um, all the stuff you really need. I, I would honestly say, guys, if you're really into your kill team, that this is a kind of must-have to add to your edition. Definitely. Um, uh, just even you know, even if it wasn't the models that you're you're looking for, uh, having the additional rules which opens yeah. up having to be able to fight in a close combat by uh, close combat space fights mm -hmm. sounds really really cool. Uh, extra, you know, different ways to just play different kill teams. Yep. Interesting to see how the commander works. Uh, certainly that will bring a different dynamic to your kill team. So guys, thanks very much for watching. I hope uh, you really enjoyed this unboxing, getting to see what you're going to get when uh, it's out for you guys to purchase. Again, thank you to, to Games Workshop for sending us this over. Really, uh, really awesome from you guys, so appreciate it. Uh, but more importantly guys, thanks so much for watching. Comment, share, like and subscribe. Check the descriptions down below for our Facebook page, our Patreon page if you wish to support the channel or find out more about our projects, maybe some updates on Rogue Trader, you mm -hmm. never know how they come. But again, thanks very much and we hope to see you in another Tabletop Assault Battle Report.